Welcome to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm Woody Zimmerman here with Mark Skabowski of Remax Lakes. Welcome to the show. Here we are, Morton. Good morning. And uh, you wanted to talk today about a very, very specific part of the home buying process. Yeah, we got our offer accepted. You got an accepted <laughs> offer. Yeah, I mean, that is a great feeling. And then you want to tell your friends... And your parents and everybody, you know, hey, what, you know, we're I buying a house. house. Yeah, I bought a house. Yeah. But you're not quite there yet. You're not quite to the finish line yet. You know, and I'm not being negative, Nelly. It's yeah. just there's, I'm a realist. There's a lot of things that have to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and this works for both buyers and sellers, what we're talking about here. You get your offer accepted. So from the buyer's perspective, what happens now? Yeah. Well, remember we had we negotiated price, we negotiated all the terms, and one of those terms was earnest money. Mm -hmm. How, what do we need to do with the earnest money? There is a very specific date requirement on when those earnest funds need to be delivered and where they need to go to. Okay. Okay, the contract spells that out. Don't miss that. Don't miss that date. Mm -hmm. Now, that does not mean take a picture of it and send a picture to somebody. Hey, I've got my earnest funds. Yeah. Here you go. Here's a picture of it. And believe me, I've had agents do that. Oh, agents really? Agents that should know better. Yeah. They, when they wrote the contract, they put earnest funds to be delivered with one day, within one day. They took a picture of the earnest funds that the client gave them. They, they might be local. They might be out of state. Yeah. And then said, there you go. Well, the contract very specifically says to be delivered. Mm -hmm. Delivered, not a picture of. Yeah, that's not They're important. supposed to be in the hands of the escrow, yeah. whoever's holding that earnest money, whoever's holding, um, could be the listing agent, could be a title company. It's yeah. all spelled out in the purchase agreement. Okay. So for a buyer, make sure you pay attention to the dates and the times that are on your contract. Earnest money is the first one that if you miss it, in today's market, if they have an accepted backup offer, they could actually move you out of primary position oh. because you didn't conform to the to, contract. To the con yeah, you broke the contract. And all yeah. of a sudden, right. that backup offer comes in. Now, you'd like to think mm -hmm. that that couldn't happen. It happened. It has happened to me and a client one time. Now, mm -hmm. I didn't snap a picture and send it. The mail lost their check. Oh, no. It took... They mailed it from Florida, and it took eight days, and we had put on the contract five days. Ooh. And on day six, the listing agent said, we have a backup offer, you're no longer primary position, wow. and you're out. And unfortunately, my people were moving. You know, when I had suggested, hey, why don't you overnight it? Nah, it'll be fine, the mail will get there. We really should overnight those funds. Yeah. Didn't, I? I so I used that example yeah. Now with folks, it's like, if we need to drive it there, we're driving it there to get that earnest money there. Yeah. It, it's important. Again, it's only happened one time. I've done a lot of transactions over but my now, career. But now you can transfer funds pretty easily you from can bank to bank. So electronically. Electronically, yeah, electronically yeah, there's yeah. all of those options. Just comply with the, the terms of the contract. Yep. The other thing is, if you're financing, you need to get a fully executed copy of that purchase agreement to your lender mm -hmm. and make formal application. When I say that, that means there, maybe you've already done to get your pre-approval. Every lender does it a little differently. Maybe you've done a complete credit app. Maybe you've put in, I got this much in this account. Here's yeah. what I paid, all of that stuff. Bottom line, get a complete copy of an executed purchase agreement, including the seller's disclosure and lead-based paint. Get that to your lender so they can order the appraisal on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Because in that contract, it says that you will start the financing process yeah. and your days start. So your financing starts. There's a time when you'll have written commitment or loan yeah. approval. Right. It's in the contract. You need to get right on that. Right. You need to get the purchase agreement, fully executed copy to your lender, get that application started. Okay. So you've made that formal application. Um, now, order your inspections. If you've negotiated inspections, if you've agreed to inspections, get those inspections ordered sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. The inspectors may be backed up. If you put 10 days, that's a pretty tight window to try to get the inspections. Right. They have completed. a schedule, too. They have a schedule, too. Got to be accommodating to that. Typically, when I write them, we do 15 or 17 days. Okay. But think about that if you got holidays in there, if you got bank holidays, you got weekends, depends on when you get the offer written, all of those things. Right. 
just get on it, get it ordered so you can say, okay, I've met the timeline. Yeah. The next thing is once you've got those inspections completed, get your response in on time mm -hmm. because there's a timeline. Right. You don't want to miss the timeline. And I distinctly remember you had a transaction. I did. Yourself. I did. <laughs> that the inspection window changed. Yeah, right. And exactly. And it, there was like, and, and the seller, he was basically like, well, you know, we could, we could kind of slow, you know, slow pace this one. I'm like, okay, fine. And I called the inspector and the inspector went to the, went to the property um, nobody was there and, and then what happened, but they didn't tell anybody that nobody was there. So I'm thinking that the, the inspection is going, yeah, it's all going to go through and it didn't, yeah. you know, and you missed the window. I missed the window. You yes. missed the window. Yeah. And you know what our contracts say is if you miss the window, you've accepted the property as it is. Yeah. So don't believe me. Those are where the 2 a.m. when I wake up in the middle of the night. Go, right. Oh, God. Did yeah. I miss that? Right. Yeah. Did I miss an inspection date? I mean, I have a process, a system mm -hmm. where hopefully I don't. Yeah. But we all make mistakes. And boy, that's a big one. Yeah. Right. Because explain that to a client. Correct. We yeah. missed it. Even though technically it's a client's responsibility. But right. who's right. the professional? In yeah, the exactly. Who it's knows like, the dates? Who knows the time? That goes back to the handholding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And let's, let's keep them on track. Right. And after the break, we'll. We'll, we'll continue on along in the process. All right, you're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm Woody Zimmerman with Mark Skabowski of Remax Lakes, and we're talking about we have an accepted offer, and now what? We're going through the process right now. Yeah. So we, you know, we've ordered inspections. We figured out, you know, what we want to have done because we're probably paying for them. And I just a key point. Many times we negotiate in the further conditions seller to credit buyer XYZ at closing for yeah. closing costs prepaids and or inspections. From a buyer standpoint, you still need to pay for those mm -hmm. up front. You're gonna get reimbursed Indeed. if you go all the way to closing. Right, yeah. If you don't go all the way to closing, you paid for inspections and that's it, mm -hmm. right? It's, yeah. Seller's not gonna reimburse you if you don't close the house. Correct. If you don't close on the sale of the home, just yeah. so you know. So we, we've made our formal application for mortgage. There's a lot of things going on in the background. Our lender's probably going to ask us to pay for the appraisal mm -hmm. when we meet with them to do that. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for ordering the appraisal. We get some lenders kind of go outside their lane and say, well, let's wait until we get your inspections back before we order the appraisal. Mm -hmm. That way you don't spend money on the appraisal. Well and a house that you don't buy if the inspections are bad. Mm -hmm. Our contracts specifically say, that's why we give the lender a co executed copy. It says appraisal to be ordered immediately. Mm -hmm. It does not say wait until your inspections are done. Yeah. Why am I making that point? There's still lenders out there and I get it. You know, We don't want our clients to spend money mm -hmm. that they shouldn't otherwise spend, but actually if your lender advises that, they're advising you to breach the contract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you don't close, that could be one thing that comes up. Yeah. If you know, if you were supposed to close, is it likely? Probably not. I'm not being an alarmist, but I read those contracts. They are not open to interpretation. Yeah. Immediately means immediately. Mm -hmm. It's not define is. Mm -hmm. Going back to the Clinton years, right? Yeah. Can you explain is? <laughs> yeah, young right. folks out there listening going, What's that? <laughs> Google yeah. it. Yeah. You'll right. figure it out. Yeah. What defining is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that is in the contracts that's ordered immediately. Yeah. So as long as those things are taking place, your lender's doing some work in the background. Don't change your credit. Don't go oh. out and get any new credit. That's a big one. Do not get a 90 days, same as cash, is new credit. Yes. Right? right? Continue to make your payments on time, all of those things. Right. We've got this offer accepted. We don't want it to fall apart before we get to the finish line. Right. So the lender is pulling your credit. Mm -hmm. They are uh, doing what the underwriting process. And, and quite honestly, I don't know exactly what that is. They're dotting I's, crossing T's. Right. I say it goes into the cloud, which is underwriting. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they do in there, mm -hmm. but they're asking questions. Mm -hmm. You may have to provide a letter of explanation. Why did you make this big deposit? Where did this money come from? Right. Those kind of things. If your lender asks for it, they're asking for it because their underwriter needs it. Yeah, there's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason. So from a buyer's standpoint, 
get it done, get it to them mm -hmm. as quickly as you can. Right. You know, many times I hear, well, you know, we're blaming the lenders for everything. Well, we're not closing on time because the lender didn't get their job done. Well, did the buyer provide the information so that the lender could get their job done? Right, right. Right? I mean, it, everybody's working together to get it to the finish line. If mm -hmm. you get a buyer who's non-responsive, you're not going to get to the finish line. No, and, you won't. And, and, you know, I get buyer's remorse. I get that. You know, you're, well, is this really the right thing? I get buyers, we get an accepted contract. A week later, another house comes, well, I like that house better than I like this house. Well, you know, we're kind of committed to this one. Mm -hmm. Not kind of, we are committed to this house. Yeah. If you don't want to buy it, okay, we'll have to work within the contract, which probably can lose your earnest money. Yeah. If you decide you want to get out of that. Mm -hmm. So you need to make that decision. So um, we got the offer accepted. We got our application in. Underwriting's happening. 30 to 45 days, we're probably closing on that house. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're going to need to get an insurance estimate because you got to have the property insured if you're financing. Okay, your lender is going to tell you what you need to do along those steps. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, we're working for the magic tones, which is clear to close, where that file comes out of the cloud, which is underwriting. Yep. Boom, we have clear to close. Mm -hmm. Closing will be scheduled. Be flexible, buyer. They cannot, you're trying to coordinate you, your agent, the title company, the seller, and their agent. Right. All everybody trying to get into the same room at the same time. Yeah. You know, and I, when I say be flexible, it might need to shift a day or two, mm -hmm. sometimes three days. It just depends on yeah. what's going on. Be flexible. Don't be so, well, I have to do it on Friday afternoon at four o'clock because I have a crew set up coming to move. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's not ready to close until Monday, you're not moving mm -hmm. until that property closes. Right. So be flexible along the way. Mm -hmm. Your lender will let you know the rest of the steps of the process, how much money you need to wire, if you need to wire money. Right. I guess there's a lot more details to that, but you're going to need to show ID that says you are who you say you are. It's government issued ID has to be valid. Don't have an expired driver's license and try to buy a house. Uh, right. <laughs> it won't work. Yeah. The title company is going to make you prove that you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know there's a lot of detail. We kind of rushed here at the, at the tail end. Uh, hey, we're almost ready to close. There's a lot more detail related to that. If you got any questions can always reach out. We can talk about those specifics. So I think we'll do a series on... We should, on why you need an on agent. why you need an and, agent. Because, yeah, we were doing that last week on why you need an agent. Yeah. And a lot of it is because of this stuff right here. These things that you otherwise wouldn't know. No, there's there's so much information and so much detail that goes into detail. this. And you're walking people through this stuff all the time. Yeah. Where people yes. like me, I'm not doing it all the time. You're not so. doing it all the time. It makes a big difference. Yeah, it sure does. All right. So if you'd like to continue this conversation with Mark, make sure you reach out. Mark, contact information. Sure. Website, skabowskiteam.com, 574-527-0660. Mark at skabowskiteam.com. If you want to email me questions, concerns. Hey, the show's great. Oh, man, the show stinks. Either way, let me know. <laughs> and look for our mugs on uh, YouTube as well. You've been listening to Real Estate Real Time. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.